Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. And, uh, yeah, there was a little delay to get this episode out there. Because... Aluminum is holy shit complicated. And I started making an episode where I'm like, Hey, let's, let's lay out our aluminum line. And it took me, like, two hours to figure out all the little bullshit that is required for this setup and get all sorts of stuff ready for it until I was able to get my aluminum set up. I mean, honestly, it'll probably take me a good 20 minutes just to explain what I have set up instead of just trying to set it up. In the first place so, okay with that being said this is my aluminum plant and it has many pieces so first off we have our bauxite coming in and yes I probably could have and should have as it was mentioned to me used uh, elevators and lifts Instead of belts coming down out of that area, instead of making this corkscrew of belts going down, I could have just gone out to the center and then just gone lift, 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 straight down. But I'm a dumbass, and I didn't realize that. <laughs> I didn't think about that. And is that one of my plants way the heck out there? Oh, it totally is. Oh my god, you can see my bauxite line. That is so cool. It is way the hell out there. So, what I have done is we have the bauxite that's like right here. But then I also went over here and there's another bauxite here. And then I brought that over and then connected it to the existing bauxite and then it does its corkscrew down across here and then onto my pipelines that come down to where I am. So that's bauxite. We're getting 480 out bauxite, but the plant that I have set up is only 420 of input. So that's okay. The other thing I need from a raw resource is actually some copper. So there is some copper right over there. I split it off and we've got three smelters there making me the 90 copper ingots that I need and they come along and they come on down here and we have 90 copper ingots coming in to the process. We also have 300 silica, as you can see there on the top line. 300 silica coming down and around from the factory as I have brought the uh, sulfur, not sulfur, the, uh, the quartz from the, the two caves here. I ran them all the way down through here, past here, and into the base. And now they are in the base. They're being made into silica and... Uh, uh, quartz crystals which are being used to make crystal oscillators and such so very good stuff we have 300 new because there is some silica being produced by the system that is then getting recycled uh, i might have to do something about the backed up silica make sure the silica doesn't uh, overflow um, but no matter what we do have enough silica for the system to function I haven't turned anything on yet, as in the fact that I've got every single recipe set up, I just haven't connected the bauxite. So this whole system hasn't started yet. But that's the inputs that we're bringing in. We're then going to go over to the first step. So the first step in aluminum production is taking our bauxite, combining it with water right here, and creating alumina solution. So this makes alumina solution in some silica. That silica along with the 300 fresh silica is going to be used at a later on portion of the, uh, the process. Each one of these takes 100 water and to do 420 bauxite, we have six of them. So we need 600 water, which is actually two full tubes. But what we've done is we've done the similar sort of thing where it is pipeline going into this refinery and then there's a water 
then the pipeline going into here, then a water, pipeline going to here, then a water. And so this is giving 120. So 100 is going to here, and 20 is coming along to here, going into here. This is giving 120. So then 80 is going into here, and that, like, uh, it all balances out in the end. So that it should be that, you know, they share a little bit on each side and they are balancing each other out and these should get their 100 each. If I have to change this around a little bit, uh, so be it. So here, we'll make the alumina solution in silica. So why don't I just, I, I kick this thing going. Here we go. There, and there. Okay. So this, making silica and alumina solution. So then the alumina solution is being made into these pipelines. These, and the silica is coming out to this right here. These pipelines are going along. There's pipeline one, and here's pipeline two. Each of these is gonna have 240 alumina solution. And they're going to come along to here, which is exactly 240 alumina solution per minute. This takes a little bit of petroleum coke, which we've gone and stolen from the system over there. But it only takes a little bit, and so we're just taking some overflow over to here. And we should be able to get as much as we need. This makes alumina scrap and overflowing water. So that water can then get piped back and is piped back into, pumped back into the original system here where this water is. And that makes it so that we are, uh, we need one less water pump because we're getting 120 water because each of these should be giving 60 water per minute. We're also getting 360 parts of this alumina. Uh, oh shit, uh, this isn't connected. <laughs> uh, 360, eh? It might actually be too much. I might have to redo my 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 belts here, because these belts not, might not be fast enough. Uh, 360, though. I, I could just do this with Mark V belts as soon as I got some of this stuff worked out. Uh, this might back up a little bit in, in the meantime, but that's okay. But this is making aluminum scrap and the excess water, the excess water is getting brought back into the system. Now here is where the silica comes in. We get the silica as well as the aluminum scrap to make aluminum ingots. And those aluminum ingots come out here, can fly along, and then get distributed out into the assemblers with the copper, which then makes aluminum sheets. And then we have aluminum sheets and that's it we've made aluminum and I'm getting caught on my belts here I mean this is amazing I have aluminum sheets and we're probably gonna have to do a couple little adjustments here these belts are obviously not fast enough so we're going to change you to a mark 5 belt that can stay mark 4 you can be mark 5 you can be Mark V, and you can be Mark V. And that should be more than fast enough to handle all of the stuff coming out of here, right? Oh, no, wait, this little bit right here is Mark IV. There we go. That's where it was uh, clogged up. So that stuff is <laughs> freaking flying now. All right. How are we doing for power with this entire setup going? We're doing fine. Okay, so then this is, seems like it's going down. Yeah, we're good. We're, we're, we're slowly going down here. Okay, good. So this is draining. Oh, this, this actually, this section probably only needs to be marked four because that's only the uh, 360 
it's only after that where it needs to get uh, increased up to the higher level belts. Okay, the only other worry I had was the possibility that the silica here would get overflowed? But it doesn't look like that's an issue. Looks like the little bit of silica we're getting from this, we're getting um, 120 uh, additional silica with the 300 fresh silica that we're making is more than enough for these uh, these aluminum ingots to be made with. Okay, good. With these being at full blast, that is. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, this this whole aluminum setup was so goddamn confusing. It literally took me like the entire hour and a half to figure out the orientation of all this stuff. Because what I've done, uh, if I can go over here and grab that elevator, to oh, grab the ladder here, we have our first step here, which is the alumina solution, and that's facing this way. But then I instead of making this sort of sequential of here, then here, then here, then here, then going out, I decided that this sort of turning at 90 degrees after that step it actually works quite well because the output here can then go along this way the silica can be branched off early and the alumina solution can wrap around the back and then the silica is right there ready to work with it and by doing it that way we bring it up a little bit closer for the copper and it all comes together and then that means that we have 120 aluminum sheets per minute. Which is ridiculous. And I don't need all this uh, pipe materials anymore because I'm done building all this piping here. Yeah, probably just another couple stacks to get rid of. And blah, we can grab all that aluminum sheets. With that, we can start to run this back to the base, which will take a, a quick minute to do. But the other thing is now we have aluminum, we can start doing some of the more higher and advanced production. Because I, as you can see in the top right, I have nuclear power unlocked. So that means that we can start doing nuke stuff. I don't really need much more power right now. I mean, the majority of the base is in sort of standby mode. So, uh, yeah, eventually we're going to need more power. And I'm going to have to deal with the nuclear byproducts and waste and put it somewhere question is where? See, I'm more interested in there is the uh, what are they called? They're the geothermal vents around the, the map? I am much more interested in finding all those geothermal vents and getting all those plugged in and happy rather than uh, going through and finding every single piece of uranium on the planet. Because in the geothermal are easy, no waste, just build and forget about it kind of mentality. And now that I have aluminum, I need to run it into one of these systems here. And let me just bring up my satisfactory resource lines. Aha! This is the issue. Is my resource lines are full. And what I've actually had to do is expand my resource lines. So I had up to G. So it would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G before. But now we've added H, I, here. 
Is that right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Yeah. God, I can't remember it correctly unless I freaking sing it. That's the problem. Ah, that is a real problem. So this here is my uh, quartz line, essentially. Everything that's to do with quartz is going to go there. And this is going to be my aluminum side. So everything that's going to go with aluminum is going to go there. So you conveyor belting, as we do a quick save. I dislike your positioning here, but uh, it's going to be fine. What we need to do is take this belt here, and we need to make a couple stackable poles to better organize this shit. Cut that off there for a second, cut that off there for a second. And right here. Say four. That'll be good. Okay, so you are gonna go to the top one on this side going this way. The one further down is gonna go that direction. Then you go to this one, and that pole is removed. So does that pole. You are going that way. The splitter. It's gonna come to there, and then you. Uh, where do I want you to go? That's a very good question. Let's go to the top. Because then when it goes up on the next level, it'll go be on the bottom. So then I'll make life easy. So that means the aluminum is on the bottom. But then this is just a quick, well, not so quick, but a, a easy two, three, four, five. I just gotta lay out all these poles and bring the aluminum along to the next level here and get it into position for advanced production to be taking part. And it's only 120 per minute, so I don't need to make this Mark V belts just yet. But I'll continue that in a minute here. We do have nuclear power unlocked. So let's go see what that has in, entails for us and then off camera I'll come back here and I'll get the aluminum upstairs and then we'll see what we can do with aluminum. Okay here so nuclear power off you go. Milestone reached. With the provided buildings and parts, you can now set up nuclear power generation, which balances an increase of fuel production complexity with improved power output. Uranium scanning unlocked. Note, this method of power generation creates nuclear waste. All right, supercomputer is a nuclear plant there. I uh, think logistics, organization, uh, nope, nothing new in these sections. So, scanner can now scan for uranium, and we can select our next milestone, advanced aluminum. Oh, sweet, we have enough aluminum sheets already, and that'll give us level three miners. <gasps> All right. All right, well, the pod will return in a bit here. I'm gonna, we're going to continue with that in this episode for sure. Oh, uranium, where you, where you be? There and there, eh? Uh, if I remember correctly, this one's in a cave. There's like a... If you go down here, there's a cave. Oh, where's that third one? Way over there. I'll definitely have to do, like, uranium somewhere else on the map. Maybe down here or something like that. Or maybe... Who knows? Somewhere. I believe it needs water as well. We'll have to figure out what it needs and figure out where we can put it. But... I'm going to grab the materials I need to do that advanced aluminum production. I'm going to bring the aluminum and bring it up to the third floor. And we'll be right back. Oh, and after a long wait there, it is back. I've run the aluminum line up into the third level of the base. 
and it is time for advanced aluminum production. Off you go. Milestone reached. Advanced Back into space for you. Parts can now be produced, which are necessary to build the Miner Mark III. Yes. Batteries can be used as a fuel source for vehicles. Goddamn batteries, man! And we can make Miner Mark Threes. Yes. So they need miners, of course. We need five turbo motors. Turbo motors. All right, let's go see what turbo motors need. I have a feeling it's going to be something really complicated and expensive, but hey, we've got the manufacturers set up up here, ready to frickin' rock, as we have everything all set up. And then we get to Minor Mark Threes. We go set this out. All of my lines will actually be running at their full capacity because until now, I've been I've been planning all of my lines as if they were uh, having Mark Threes on them. So once I put Mark Threes on everything, all my lines will be at their actual 480. It's so exciting! So exciting! So let's see, here is my first unused manufacturer. We have batteries and turbo motors, which needs radio control units and heat sinks. Heat sinks are... Oh! Aluminum and rubber. Oh, they, uh... Are they an assembler item? They are. Oh, a new assembler item. Oh, and also some other assembler items specifically for nuclear. Okay, so let's set this up. Heat sinks will be part of aluminum. And aluminum is right here. So... Heat sinks will be on this line. So let's set this thing up as oh, what's a radio control unit. I don't have those yet. I think that's some sort of research that I need to do. Ah, damn. Okay, so I don't have those yet. But I do have batteries, except for sulfur. God damn. I need to run sulfur to this base. Ah, so much work. Okay. Where, okay, what is radio control units? Those will be batteries. This will be probably radio control units. Uh, downstairs, I'm more likely to build, um, just pop through the floor here. Zip along the conveyor belt. I'm pretty sure at this end of the assembler level, I have some spare assemblers that I can use. Uh, oh, I, do I? I do have black powder and sulfur being made, eh? Oh, wait, is it being made? No, I don't have any coal coming up here. But I just had some spare black powder. Right. Okay. I... Do I... need to make black powder here. I think I'm going to make black powder and noblesse and stuff like that at a separate location. I think this is actually going to be instead we can make our heat sinks here. Yeah, let's do that. Cut those away. Plop in another splitter here. So we need the aluminum sheets and rubber. So... Pull this sulfur back. Aluminum sheets is right there. And rubber is... There at the top. Okay. So, that one, and, ah, this one right here. Okay, 
as you can see where it is. Should be... That bad boy. Yeah, there we go. Aluminum sheets and rubber. Conveyor belt's too long! <laughs> And it going in here should be 70 rubber per minute. Oh, I gotta upgrade these. Ah, whatever. I'll just start. I mean, eventually what I'm gonna do is probably upgrade everything in the factory to Mark 5s as well. So we'll just get those to Mark 4s. Hey, heat sinks. Okay. And then heat sinks are going to. Uh, that's its output right there. It's gonna come along and be right below. On this level, the uh, aluminum. This is the first thing I built with aluminum, which is amazing. Right there. And then the previous section bit can be cut off. And you are too long as well. Boom. Ha <laughs> Eat six. Ah, oh, life is good. Well, at least that's the first level of aluminum. Uh, I can't follow it up there. That's up to there. That's going along. Got eight heat sinks on that line already. Okay. So I'm guessing that there's some sort of research I need to do now in order to get those radio control units. Uh, it should be pretty easy for me to do because I pretty much have every resource here. I, I forgot that I had run that sulfur. God, those belts look so cool at night. Uh, I'll need to probably run a bypass on some of my coal in order to uh, get sulfur and coal up there if I want to do some more black powder in the future. But I could just run that sulfur up to the, the, the top and use it to make batteries, which would probably be the best use for that sulfur. Um, right, research. My guess is that it's Caterium research? Yeah. Caterium research. So I will power my way through this Caterium research. Looks pretty easy. I've got some of these materials just up in the top of the base. I can go grab them, get this done real quick, and wait out the time it is to get through them all. And in the next episode, we shall do. Uh, if I have enough place, I you. Next episode, we shall go and make our first turbo motor. We'll make radio control units. We're already making heat sinks. We have motors. We have rubber. So all I need to do is find out what I need to do to make radio control units and build those. And then I can start building turbo motors. And then once I have turbo motors after that episode, I can spend an entire episode going around and making absolutely everything. Um, oh, shit. That's going to be really easy to get. 500 rubber. Bloop. 500 rubber. Um... I can go around and make every single uh, one of my miners around here Mark III, and then the world will be glorious and happy. And with wait, hazmat, that's it. Once I'm done hazmat, am I just done? Because tier 8 is done, right? Or at least, yeah. Once I have hazmat done, that is it. I've completely unlocked every milestone. Huh. Dude. That's pretty awesome. But yeah, that's going to be it for now. I will go and grab these bits that I need for my research. Uh, oh, there's the radio control units. I needed um, crystal oscillators and aluminum. Okay, that's easy. And some radio signal scanning stuff and radio radar technology. I'll get all this research done off camera, and next episode, we'll make some more turbo motors. That's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and good hunting out there, fellow pioneers.